Okay, so this is a brief demo on how to do topic tagging on Lucky Data so that uh, profiles can be constructed for Scolia about uh, a given topic. So let's start by <coughs> typing in the, uh, the topic of our choice. So I've chosen vitrification here. Uh, and then while this is the profile is being uh, created, so we can already have a look at the basic structure of, of this tool. So here we see there is a topic button. Topic is also mentioned in the URL. And um, so we're looking at vit vitrification as a topic in the literature. Uh, there is a little bit of explanation that is pulled from Wikipedia. Here are a few things that are related by graph properties uh, in Wikidata. Here's a little bit of context for the topic. And then here's uh, what we actually want in terms of topic tagging. So here we have papers that are tagged as being about vitrification, but we notice that the latest paper tagged here is from 2018. So basically this means there hasn't been uh, contact tagging, content tagging uh, since 2018. Um, and well, someone can go in and do it. So uh, that's what we plan to do now. We also see that there are already like 500, at least 500 entries uh, under the vitrification uh, subject. We also see here that uh, yeah, 2018 is about only part, partially done. Uh, we see some of the earliest publications on the topic. Uh, we see authors that have frequently published on the topic. Um, we see how they collaborate. We see topics that co-occur, cryoprotecting, cryopreservation. That's not surprising because cryopreservation is one of the main uses of vitrification. Uh, we can have a graph of these topics. Some of the topics actually have a geolocation. So we can plot them on an app. Uh, vitrified red deer embryos. Yeah, vitrification for uh, embryonic research. Then uh, we can take into account also the citations in order to identify the most prominent authors on the topic. And here is a little link that is going to be important, so we will open it already. Uh, we see the most prominent journals on the topic, uh, some works that are most cited, and authors that are most cited, then uh, institutions or organizations that are actually associated with the topic. So. Um, there is quite a spread around the world, um, but yeah, Africa not visible as is often the case for various reasons. And then we have two hotspots here. One is University Autonomous University of Barcelona, and the other one is Utah State University. So um, these are institutions that are currently known to Wikidata as being prominently associated with the topic. And then uh, institutions, uh, they are located in a different, in a certain country and uh, the papers are linked to the authors, the authors are linked to the institutions and your papers also linked uh, between each other by way of citations. So we can construct a citation graph uh, by countries for this particular topic. And some people who have worked on the topic have also received prizes. And so that's the kind of thing that we see on the topic profile. Now uh, we rem remember we wanted to uh, do topic tagging, so we wanted to improve the tagging of the papers uh, that already exist here. And there's there are various uh, things we can do. Um, a simple one that often works, but I can't guarantee it works here, uh, is um, to actually look at papers that are cited, yeah, cited from works on a topic, 
but don't have this string vitrification in their title. So here we have the cryo preserved by ultra rapid cooling. So ultra rapid cooling is the method that you would use in order to vitrify some sample. And so uh, essentially um, it's it's about vitrification as well. And so we can go in and tag that um, that paper accordingly. So yeah, it's already tagged for cryopreservation. And so we can add vitrification. And while we're at it, we can also check blastocyst And we can try bovine oocyte. Not sure that exists. I mean, of course, that exists, but I'm asking here about whether Wikidata knows about it. No, bovine oocyte is not a thing yet, but maybe that's another thing we could work on. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, leave that for the moment. So um, here, importantly, this paper had not been tagged. Oh yeah, it had only been tagged with one topic, cryopreservation here. But um, already here, vitrification is kind of already known to it because here we take into account uh, the um, topics of papers cited to and from the target paper. So cryoprotect and cryopreservation, zygote, Microfluidics, probably yes. Um, so all of these paper uh, topics they kind of occur on papers cited to and from. So that's another way to infer uh, potential topic tags. Um, because if something is often cited from vitrification papers, it might actually be about vitrification, but sometimes it's not. So um, yeah, now we have tagged this one as being about. Um, vitrification as well. If it's cited a lot from vitrification papers and it uses a method that causes vitrification, it's probably about vitrification. This is something we can say actually without having to look at the paper itself. But of course for some things if you want to do more detailed tagging it is useful to do, look at the uh, paper itself. But uh, that doesn't easily scale that well if you do it manually the way I've um, just demonstrated here, which is why it is interesting to look at automated approaches. Okay, so um, that's what we currently have. We can also we can try another thing. So uh, out of those 200 total entries, we have 145 that have some sort of vitrification in the title here already, which basically means we could do the same thing that I've just done here uh, for this one paper. We could do this for the other uh, 54 that are that don't have anything vitrification in their title and then we could go and um, t add the tag and so on but yeah that doesn't scale well and so I will briefly demonstrate one additional way of uh, scaling this up a little bit um, but uh, I'm interested in exploring how we can actually systematically use uh, text mining for these kind of things and especially leverage existing tagging like the mesh uh, subject tags from PubMed for uh, such purposes. Okay, so um, something I had mentioned in between is the um, curation page. If you check the URL, so here we have slash topic, then slash Wikidata identifier, and here the same thing, slash curation. Um, so for uh, many of the Scolia profiles you have such a curation page which basically lists things that we already know that uh, are gaps or missing pieces of information uh, from the perspective of the uh, main page of the so if, if you're looking at the vitrification profile then uh, some of the papers are currently tagged with vitrification um, they are missing certain pieces of information, like for instance here, Mosh de Salenia is uh, a, a name string that often occurs on papers that have the topic tag vitrification. Okay, so here we have a little tool called the Orthodisambiguator 
that helps us uh, disambiguate authors. So uh, it, what it does is it uh, finds all the papers that have this particular name string or slight variations of it and clusters them. So here we have group one. Uh, let's see, here is group two. Um, let's see whether group one, group two. Group four is also about vitrification, so probably the same person. Um, the other groups might also be by the same person, but I don't want to go into too much detail right now. For the purposes of this, this particular tagging, it doesn't matter too much how we start. The important thing is that we do start. Um, yeah, I could pick a few of those as well. Uh, that name is not too common and uh, specifically in the vitrification field, there are not going to be too many of those. And here the first word actually in the, in the single paper that this identified person that that ORCID has published is vitrification. So we're talking about this um, same person here. So what we can now do is um, this author disambiguator has some tooling that will now go into certain papers, like for instance this one here that we had before and it will list this Mojde Salenia as an author um, and we can actually look at the detailed change that it has made. Yeah, so uh, I'm listed as the author but the actual edit was done by a tool and uh, we can look at, so what they've done here is author name string which is P2093, was changed to author, which is uh, here, author P50. Um, so from a string, we have gone to uh, an identified person. And the reference was kept, basically. Yeah, and, and so this is um, the current state. And uh, now that this tool is done with these edits, um, we can actually look at, or we could look at the Scolia profile for that author. Initially, there should be just one paper. And, um, well, there, there's a problem, there's sometimes a time lag. So let's first see whether, yeah, they still list 36 of those. Let's do maybe another one of their colleagues in the meantime. Yeah, some of this actually takes time. This is live computation on a large data set and shared computational infrastructure. Okay, oh. Well, let's try what happens. So, so what we see here is now there is a list of 37 entries actually uh, for this particular person here. Uh, when initially they had just one, and uh, yeah, now now we we can see a little bit more about them. So there's an entire profile that we can build. Also, we can see uh, that vitrification is amongst the topics they've published most about. And also, if we reload our vitrification page here, if we're lucky, how many papers do they have on vitrification? Let's check. 20. So um, let's see here the authors that have published most on the topic. Yeah, so they should pop, if I reload this page, they should now pop up here. Hello, hello, hello. This is all live, so some things, yeah, here we go. And uh, 
but we were not entirely done with uh, the, the curation of their papers. So 72, we've done about half of their papers so far. And now with the existing 36, um, we should be able to match them even better. Okay, theoretically, uh, the tool should now recognize that this is the same ovarian stimulation, early pregnancy. Yeah, so this is probably the same, but um, outer hair cells, I'm not entirely sure this is. Okay, oh, here. So here the tool thinks uh, it's the same person. And so we could just go on and, and do, but this seems to be a bit more complex and so requires a bit more um, detailed inspection. And so I'll just stick to those where vitrification actually occurs somewhere. Stellanius, so here, here. Yeah. Well, cryo preservation is probably the same person as well. Here. 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 And so this is an iterative process. Uh, so the more information we have about uh, this person here, the more likely uh, the, the tool is uh, to uh, be able to suggest whether any paper with this string would actually correspond to that person. And it might well be that there are some other people that have the na same name string. And if that's the case, then we would have to create another Wikidata item and then we would have to choose between them here um, when matching the papers. Okay, yeah, so this is also done now. And so if we were to reload their profile, then ideally we should get more than 37 papers here. Uh, but there is some amount of caching going on which might disturb this a little bit. So, yeah. If you do this when you reload, uh, when you watch the video, uh, the numbers are probably higher. <coughs> okay, so that was uh, tagging with the authors. And basically we would like to do something similar um, for uh, topic tagging. We don't currently have uh, a topic tagger, um, uh, but what we can do is, let me just close a few tabs here. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, so this one, this was the colleague. Uh, I'll ignore that for the moment. Um, what we can do is look at some example of how to do annotations in, in, in a more, let's say, scalable way. And we have actually implemented that in order to curate the COVID-19 related um, information. So you, you just saw me type in this shortcut WD colon COVID into the search box. And then I'm ending up here on this page, which is for Wiki Project COVID-19. That uh, is a collaboration to curate COVID-19 related information on Wikidata. This has a subpage query, so that I'm going to use now and at the very bottom here on the on the maintenance queries. This has this section, articles with COVID-19 topic and a title, but not as a main subject. So what does that mean? Let's have a look at some of the examples. Let's see whether that gives anything. Okay, yeah, we have one example. Uh, so this is very actively maintained. Um, and let's briefly have a look at what this query does. So first, uh, we, we select a number of things here, basically, that then pop up as the headers of this table. Um, we tell the machine to use some optimization techniques. That's not important for us here right now. And then we actually search our Wikidata basically the same way if I were to type COVID-19 into Wikidata. Let's just do this quickly. So um, if I were to type COVID-19 here with um, 
quotation marks. That's the kind of search this would uh, do, but you see there is 82,924, there's 82,000 results. Um, this service here will only yield 10,000, um, but I've also uh, added the, uh, the additional search term pandemic. So let's see what this gives here. So 23,000, still larger than 10,000. And uh, then it can also look at uh, whether the items that are being returned here, like for instance this one, are instances of this thing here. P31 means is an instance, and this is, uh, well, if we don't know what it is, we can always check. We just type it here, control uh, space, and then it, uh, the tool here will tell us what it is, or the article. And uh, the same, we can do this. This P921 is, um, oops, main subject. And uh, then here, this is hello COVID-19 pandemic, right? So basically what we're doing here is we're looking for scholarly articles, in, uh, items that have are an instance of a scholarly article that do not, that's the minus, have a subject tag of, as being about the COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, they have uh, COVID-19 pandemic or COVID-19 as a string with quotation marks and also the word pandemic somewhere on the page which might still be in the title of a cited paper um, which is why we do an additional filter to make sure COVID-19 and pandemic actually occur in the title and since there's uh, sometimes well the, the capitalization varies between uh, papers we always normalize it to lowercase here so basically what we've done is look for papers that have COVID-19 and pandemic in their title but have not been topic tagged uh, as being about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And so right now we found only one. Uh, we can change this slightly because there are probably a few more that haven't been created because there is also... Um, Variants. Sometimes they use a different dash, they use a space or so. Let's see what, what this gives here. <clears throat> oh yeah, now we have 74 results. Uh, you see here is one dash, here is a space. Uh, here's another space with space, uh, another one with dash. So yeah, um, they're, um, basically all these papers have some sort of a COVID-19 string in their title but they have not been tagged with uh, as being about uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. We can check this briefly. So we click one of those and we see there is no main subject tag. No main subject tag. Okay, so uh, what we wanted to do is uh, do some larger scale topic tagging, not manually. So first thing is we should check whether there is anything uh, that sticks out here in terms of COVID-19 pandemic tagging. And there's numerous ways uh, <coughs> that we could do this, but for a number like just 100, it's usually the best to just scroll down and quickly read through the titles. Uh, you could also uh, just mark the COVID, uh, for instance, or just pandemic, and then see whether anything else sticks out. Sometimes you discover uh, that there is a, a synonym, like if you if you use it, another term, not uh, pandemic here, but let's say energy or force or so, those kind of things have lots of different meanings in lots of different contexts, and so for those, uh, the uh, disambiguation process is a bit more complex. But anyway, so these 74 results seem to actually be all about the COVID-19 pandemic. And so what I can do now is I comment out these two, well, this line, which will basically mean that we remove these two columns from the results. There we go. And now we have something in a tabular format that we can reuse. I'll just 
Uh, I'll delete the first line and then otherwise I'll copy paste this. And then I will go to another tool, quick statements, which basically can ingest such um, tabular uh, data. So I'll just copy paste this from memory, import. And then uh, I usually do uh, a bit of metadata. So what I, the, the purpose here is I can then run, uh, basically convert this tabular data into uh, edits on Wikidata. But uh, since this is automated and uh, there are um, there are lots of distractions always on, on, a, on a screen, um, it's, it's usually a good idea to uh, keep track of what we're doing here. So I'm copying this and I also typically copy the, um, the link to the particular query that I was using to generate that table. So that if anything goes wrong here, then this can be reconstructed, replicated, or fixed. Or if anyone just wants to replicate that same workflow, then um, they have my query right there. And yeah, so what this tool now is supposed to do is um, what we should be seeing here. So lots of people are active on this right now, and so my particular edits might have to wait for a while. Um, in the meantime, I can maybe show how to adapt this COVID-19 query to our uh, vitrification um, use case. So um, first we bring back these two columns just for uh, quality control. Vitrification. I keep the regex here actually. Um, we don't need the pandemic. We need to see what vitrification is. So yeah, this. Important here for the quick statements, we need this P921. Um, the main subject should be the, uh, the same thing as here. So if you only replace it here, then uh, that's not enough. You have to replace it here as well. That's why I named this variable replace with the target ID. And this S887 with this number here basically says this, uh, this particular statement is deduced from the title. We should see this. Uh -huh, okay, so the, the first round of edits has already been made. Um, so let's have a look. So 10 adaptive measures. I should now have a statement. Dilum, COVID-19, pandemic. That was the one that we were doing here. Uh, the main subject, COVID-19, was done by Tiago already. And you see here, it was deduced from title, which has this number, and uh, this is the P887 in uh, the language of quick statements. That translates to the S. Oops, where are we here? S eight eight seven that we put here. Okay, so back to the vitrification. So what we're going to do now is we search Wikidata for papers that have vitrification in the title, or as instances of a scholarly article, and do not have a topic tag vitrification yet. So we find four hundred. That's nice. Um, and you know, we should check them. Vitrification of radio wastes, okay. Uh, the main check here is whether you find any vitrification that is not uh, the same as the one that you're interested in. So here about that one, I'm not entirely sure, for instance.
Yeah, so, but since I'm right now only interested in vitrification, I'm not yet uh, tagging O-site vitrification. I think I'm fine, those things that we see here. Uh, but it might be useful uh, in the long run to think about more fine-grained annotation, like um, O-site vitrification or embryo vitrification or things like that, um, or soil vitrification, sperm vitrification, and uh, then those would be subclasses of vitrification. Uh, but yeah, for the moment, since this entire area is not very well annotated, I think uh, just annotating it with vitrification is good enough. And then once we have that, we can zoom in and uh, get more details. Okay, cryoprotectant free vitrification again. Yeah. So you can see heat induced brain vitrification. Okay, interesting. That's not the rapid cooling vitrification uh, that I'm talking about. So that's a candidate uh, that I would exclude for for now. Uh, but actually, a very interesting thing. Yeah, it all looks very cryo specific mostly, and it's certainly the kind of uh, vitrification we're after. Electric arc furnace dusts. Oh my goodness. Okay, but still kind of. That's not cryopreservation, uh, but still that's vitrification. Um, yeah, okay, so um, there have been a few of these that I'm not entirely sure about uh, and so I will now actually um, go and filter those 439 results a little bit more in order to exclude uh, these uh, others so what I want is all sites uh, or spermatocyte or whatever um, basically any cell. Um, something like this. Yeah, so we lost about half of the papers, uh, but we can we can deal with them later. Uh, but all of these that we have now, they should all have some biological vitrification which is certainly a subset of the vitrification I'm after here. And then we can deal with the heat-induced and uh, the other kind of things later on. Okay, so we have that. And now we basically do the same thing. We comment out these columns. And we download the data. Get rid of the first line and then we paste it in here. Um, we open another window for the metadata. So this is vitrification deduced from title. So, and then here, this is the query that we were using.
and now the job is basically started. In the meantime, we can check the other one. So the other one is finished. Um, and so, which means we should now be able to, oh yeah, we, we can reload the COVID-19 pandemic uh, profile. Um, yeah, in the meantime, while this is running, maybe that's a useful thing to do. Um, So here is a, hmm, there will be a next time. If someone in 20, 2003 wrote about uh, the next SARS epidemic, is that about the COVID-19 pandemic? Probably yes, kind of okay. Um, it's an interesting question for tagging. Um, and it's certainly a kind of tagging that wouldn't have been possible in 2003. Oh yeah, this graph is very busy. Uh, it's a busy topic, so okay. Um, I invite you to explore this on your own. And in the meantime, we can see to what extent or you know, how we're moving forward with the notification. So, what's happening here? Oh, yeah, so we have to share the resources with uh, the other. Um, batches that are currently being processed. Yeah, and next one should be ours again. Yeah. Okay, so it is done with the first round. It typically gets on your of half of the edits um, with an error. This is due to two subsequent edits being made on the same item, and that causes problems uh, if, if they are too quickly after each other, but um, you just click on the try to reset errors, and this will then um, basically make the, the missing edits uh, in the next round and usually it's done then sometimes you have a few more like five or so again uh, that you need to do a third round for but well, that's okay and that's a tool that essentially anyone can use who has a wikipedia or, or wikidata account uh, yeah so if you have a wikipedia account you essentially also have a wikidata account um, tools can only be used on wikidata if that wikidata account actually has a certain number of edits i think 50 edits and it has to have existed for four days at least and uh, so if you meet those criteria then you can use these tools and you can make um, more edits um, and that then helps you scale things up importantly you can also submit those batches um, like automatically um, what I have just shown um, like manually and also there are bots that can do this without any manual interference um, but they require more preparation they can't easily be done by everyone that's why I'm demoing this here so uh, now why did we do this uh, vitrification annotation because we wanted to uh, enrich the um, Scolio profile for vitrification, which is why I'm now going to take a snapshot of that. So here we have the um, profile as it currently is. I'm not reloading the page yet. I'm just taking a screenshot. 
um, downloading that file. Okay. And once this is done here, in the meantime, I can close a few of those windows. This one we don't need anymore. This one we don't need. This one is something I want to read up on. Um, yeah, we should soon be done here. Okay, so we're done now. And so now I'm yeah, closing this one as well. And um, and already here we should see something, uh, several things. Um, we had annotated the papers for this Moshe de Solenia, and so they should uh, disappear from the missing author items uh, list here. And now other people should pop up because we have annotated lots of more papers, and so this table could actually uh, look completely different. Let me just paste it in here and then reload. And actually this person here could come up again, potentially, uh, but then not under, uh, under the tops because we didn't finish annotating um, their papers, and there might be a few more that are now tagged with vitrification that were not tagged with vitrification before. Anyway, Anna Kobo here, with this of 21 is now this of 24, Yu Ching Chan 22, that hasn't changed, Vladimir 21, 19, yeah, so you see there is a bit of movement here. Um, but now the more interesting thing is. Um, that we take a look at the profile for vitrification itself. And now hopefully there should be some papers that go until at least 2020, maybe 2021 as well. The most recent few months are always uh, most incomplete because yeah, um, papers need to be published first, then their metadata needs to be available, the metadata needs to be imported into Wikidata. Um, the author name strings need to be converted into actual authors, the topic tagging needs to take place, um, and so all these things um, take time. Oh yeah, so what we have here is a few from uh, this year, and but uh, yeah, quite a bit from last year, and yeah, so here you see there's still um, quite some bits missing compared to what you would expect from the previous round. And that's something that uh, can come from uh, different ways of curation. So I just showed you those where vitrification as a uh, word actually occurred in the title. Um, you could also search for other strings like vitrified, vitrifying, uh, vitrify, those kinds of things, um, or even glass formation, uh, but that uh, occasionally is a different thing. Um, and the uh, and so if you combine all these different ways of annotating the topic, then you should end up with amounts that are similar here. Another reason why this might be incomplete is still that there is usually a synchronization time lag between um, what you see here and the actual edits, and so uh, maybe just waiting for uh, half an hour or so would uh, actually make this more complete here as well, but. Uh, I would be surprised if it would already reach the levels that you would ex expect here. Another reason might be that uh, some of the relevant papers just have not been important to Wikidata yet. Okay. Um, oh yeah, look here, our Marsh Day now has 25 um, when they had 20 before. This graph looks similar, crime protection hasn't changed. Topics. Uh, okay, so for some reason this 
Mr. Solenia is not cited as much as these people here, um, even though they have published a lot on the topic. Um, citations. We can do the So here, ultra rapid cooling. Okay, that's the one that we had tagged before. Yeah, another way to find out about uh, papers on a similar subject is just take some of the most prominent authors here and uh, check what their profiles are. And maybe uh, this way we can identify a few more papers that are actually about vitrification, but just don't have this in the title. Um, Let's see. Yeah, so for instance here, they have vitrified and autographed tissue. Um, so what we can do is we can go back to our query here and modify that a little bit. to search for things that have um, vitrify or something like this in their And here they have, so when I'm doing this, uh, retrieve, for instance. So I'm basically copying this uh, string here, uh, and I tell the search, the MediaWiki search engine, that it should uh, search for vitrify and then vitrified. Um, Sometimes it actually picks this up, so there's some sort of grammar parser um, between, but for this particular thing I don't know. So I'm just making sure it looks for both of those. Um, the, I could also try retrified or retrifies. so I'll, I'll uh, just leave that and then um, we are looking for those that have not been tagged yet, and then let's see what, what that gives. Okay, it gives a, a few. We should actually make that more visible. Vitrified, warmed, vitrified, warmed, oocytes. That seems to be a term of art. Uh, that is worth a closer look, but it certainly involves vitrification, so tagging those with vitrification wouldn't be wrong. Uh, it would just not be very precise. And I think, um, yeah, now, now we could, uh, for instance, think about um, setting up some sort of an item that would capture this concept. Uh, I don't plan to do that right now. Vitrified gold oocytes. Okay, so I, I think for, for our purposes, this is good enough uh, right now. Um, we can thus add a few more uh, of those. Oh, yeah, another reason why the uh, vitrification, um, the publication curve here uh, was not complete is, of course, because we filtered only for those things that had. Uh, these specific terms here in their title as well. Um, and that removed about half of the candidates. So uh, if we look at the remaining ones, we can probably then fill that gap after a while. But we should watch out for those where there is heat-induced uh, vitrification, and um, that's uh, potentially something different. Yeah. OK, so uh, we're looking at those things here. We're 
downloading this again. And then putting it into quick statements. Oops. Always go back to the query so that you then later know what you've been doing. And then we can run it in the background. Okay, and so this way we can uh, slowly but surely improve the uh, vitrification profile which then allows us also to identify uh, like people uh, that are uh, re relevant, uh, the, the co-occurring topics, um, maybe locations. So what's this here? Earthquake, vitrified warmed oocytes. Uh, okay. Interesting. So I think here, just in the twins in India following a transfer of vitrified oocytes. Okay. Yeah, so vitrified oocytes is certainly a thing that we should um, consider annotating as a subset of oocytes, and uh, then vitrification of oocytes would be a subset of, or subclass of um, vitrification. And then you can get more specific vitrification of human mature oocytes um, and so on. Uh, here it's up to use cases, like if anyone's interested in annotating that at a more granular level, they can go in and do it. Um, but otherwise uh, it will just grow naturally by whoever else is interested in related subjects and so on. Okay, so let's see what the progress is here. Yeah, we're about halfway through. Yeah, now let it do the other bit. And so now if I reload the page here, um, let's see what the, this was 95 for 2018. Let's see whether we now have a different number. We had one hundred seventeen now. Yeah, so. Slowly but surely, things are um, moving upwards. And so we can then look at closing this gap. That would basically be <laughs> um, a, a goal. And yeah, the more we work on the main page, uh, the more uh, we might actually be doing on the creation page as well. So we have a number of five items here for which no publication date is given. So for instance, they also don't show up on a timeline because there would be no place to put them. Uh, or here we don't know where they were published. Or here we have things that are tagged with vitrification, but not with anything else, any other topic. So that's the kind of thing that uh, we can curate. Uh, but at this point, I would say um, the the basic principle of how you can scale up uh, topic tagging without actual mining uh, or harvesting from other annotation sources. Um, this was shown and so uh, I'm gonna finish that particular video and, hope, and then upload it and hope that you can make some use of it.
Cheers.